Hey everyone, welcome back to Cause Streams TV. I'm Cause, and I just want to do a quick video to go over some of the beta testing we did today, Thursday, June 13th, on the on the beta test realm. So Blizzard initially was supposed to release the two bosses, Ulgrax the Devourer and the Bloodbound Horror. Well, it's kind of funny, they messed up and they released all of the bosses except for the two they actually needed. So outside of the challenges getting into the raid, once we were in, I took the time to actually go from platform to platform to see what each boss platform actually looks like. So here's, let's take a quick look at what they all look like. The first boss, the one thing I definitely like is that every platform you go to, is the arena you're fighting the boss in is very large. This is the first boss here. As you can see, it's a very large area, and you have and you have Queen Anserac at the top, just kind of waiting, waiting for you to come down with the two bosses from the Silken Court. So very cool, very big arena. The Bloodbound Horror Arena is actually another really nice one. It's a darker reddish purple hue. Looks like a really cool arena, and right up above, you actually have all of the different platforms that may be available later for all the bosses. So it was really cool to see that. I really like how this arena looks. I like the colors, and this is where you fight the second boss, the Bloodbound Horror. The next room we get teleported into is the Sikran Captain of the Suriki. This looks like it's a very big platform. However, the boss is actually on a separate platform. So I'm not sure if you're going to have to jump down to that or if you actually start on the platform below and then he pulls you up to the one that I'm standing on now. Next up, we have Ration Nan. This just looks like a very long straight platform, kind of like the other ones. It's suspended in the air. So I'm sure if you fall, you would die. Nexus Prince Caveza was next and again very large platform similar to the one you have on the first boss but this one's just closed off but again really neat that all these platforms are such large boss uh, arenas to fight it and then next up we have the Silken Court this one looks similar to the Nexus Princess Court and the first boss but it seems a little smaller and here is it looks like you're fighting a council style boss. One of and then one of the other ones we randomly skipped we actually took a look at Brood Twister Avanax. And this room is actually really cool. Lots of eggs kind of around the ground. And we also had the boss down. It's a very big platform and the boss was available. So we actually did end up getting a couple of pulls in. However, this boss really didn't do anything. Um, as we were pulling him and as we were fighting, we were doing tank swaps. There is no big damage going out. Uh, we don't think that any of the mechanics were actually enabled. As you can see, these big circles go out, but nothing really happens. No one really takes damage. Right, so yeah, those kind of go off. Uh, overall, the, the boss model looks really cool. It's kind of like a Gahoon style model, but definitely much more detail. It's got little pincers on the side, a nice face, big horns. I think they did really well with this model. It's just too bad that this boss had no mechanics that we actually have to, had to test, and it was just basically a, a target dummy for the entire duration of the fight. And another boss we had access to was Nexus Princess Caveza. Now, we went into this boss. We had no idea what it did. We had no idea what the mechanics were. We didn't even read the tooltips. We just kind of went in and started doing the boss. Now, it definitely hit significantly hard. Players get targeted with these AoE circles. They move out. After a while, they spawn assassins that hit them from behind. And then they leave. Uh, the, they get targeted with orbs on the ground. And these orbs, the tank gets one, the three players get one. And then they pull you in doing a significant amount of damage. As you can see, we lost two players there. And then balls shoot out of them as well. Really cool sequence of mechanics there. Right after that, users get targeted by assassins that shoot them with a single beam. They just kind of move out of the raid. As you can see there, they just walked out. And then those same assassins start spawning Wolverine style beams across the floor that you need to dodge. And then right after all the assassins and the beams go out, there's a ton of balls that get shot out from everybody in the raid. I'm assuming that's going to be a spread mechanic. And then the portals show up again to pull you in. And that's where I died. This boss had a lot going on and it actually seemed very interesting. We were definitely under tuned when we came into here. So a lot of the mechanics really hurt and they were one shotting. I believe we were tuned to 580 to 590 ish. So we're definitely a little under tuned for this fight, but it, the mechanically, I think this is going to be a lot of fun, a lot of personal responsibilities. The bigger the raid group, the more challenging I believe it'll be, but definitely a really fun fight. When we finally got to see Algrax the Devourer, it was about 20 minutes left to raid testing, so we didn't get a lot of pulls on it. Um, there is a tank swap mechanic. We swapped after every other smash, and then once our debuff dropped, it was really hard to see. So even after taunting, there was some challenges there. But basically, the boss drops or webs on the ground. You take these green circles. You destroy them to clear the webs. 
and what right that gives you space in the arena right there is a giant soak that comes out that everyone needs to get in and soak and then right after the soak you get pulled into the boss so as a dk it's nice you can death advance and completely ignore it I think this fight was kind of neat. There's actually a lot more to do than some of the standard target dummy bosses. And after repeating that phase a couple times, the boss will do a mechanic called Hulking Crash, which he that he does massive AOE damage, jumps into the middle of the room, spawns a whole bunch of ads from his carapace, and then opens a portal and disappears in the middle of the room. During this phase, you're fighting ads, and these ads drop carcasses that you have to feed to the boss but also there is a mechanic where he charges through you through portals at the other side of the room it's really cool very well telegraphed you can see where he's going where he's coming from they don't do a lot of damage right now that's why i was standing it to see how much they hurt but definitely a really cool mechanic very easy to see compared to how razagath used to be with the wind that was a challenging mechanic to see overall i think for a first boss it has a good amount of mechanics we didn't get it too far in uh we basically got to this phase and then we would wipe but then he comes out of a big portal, kind of like Sarkarath, and then it repeats phase one all over again. I think this fight is really good for a first fight. There's there's enough mechanics to keep the team occupied. And here's the other silhouette I talked about, the orange. I think it looks really cool. And once he comes out, out of the portal, this is where you're supposed to pick up those chunky Viseras and feed them to the boss. I have the extra action button. I didn't get to use it because I died. But that is what you do in that mechanic, and that derages him, and then the phase starts to repeat itself all over again. And next up, we had the Bloodbound Horror. You split the group into two, one on each side, and basically you just take the boss in one spot. Now, you, there's ads that spawn around the room, and the boss will do a frontal that will phase the people into the same phase that the boss are in, kind of like how Echo of Neltharion worked. So if the ads spawn on your side of the room, you would taunt the boss and then have him turn towards you. So your team, your side, your group on the side on this side of the room, actually gets teleported into the phase. It's easier to actually kill the Az this way. That way the other group doesn't have to run around the room. For a tank, you taunt the Watcher and then just bring it over to the other Az so you can kill it. There's also little Az that spawn that you don't want them to get to the boss. They are very easily killed. There's one there, basically dies almost instantly. They're not tauntable. Very simple fight so far from a tank perspective. He then has these two beams on both sides that you run through. And that is really it. Then the next phase begins. Basically, the other tank taunts and waits for the front to go out. They get phased and have to kill their own set of ads. And then there is a large AoE that happens. The AoE cast is called Gore Splatter. Now, it is un now it is rangeable. So if you wanted to outrange this, you could. As a DK, I was popping uh, Anti-Magic Shell and Icebound Fortitude. And I could actually survive it. And then after that goes off, basically the phase repeats. Again, we didn't get too far into the fight. But that, from what we saw, very simple tanking fight. There isn't a lot going on. Top on the frontal. And that is it. So my overall thoughts for the first two bosses, I definitely think the first boss, I definitely think Olgrax the Devourers, the first boss is much better than the second boss, the Bloodbound Horror. Because in the first boss, there's a few more mechanics to deal with. The fight itself seems to be have a much better flow. You There's a good tank swap mechanic that you have to watch stacks on. And then there's also ads in phase two that you get to pick up and blast. And then you have to pick up food and feed the boss. So there's a few things you have to do. And as a tank, you get to participate in that, including the soak. I like fights like that where you get to do something. The second fight is more of a boss that stands still. And as a tank, all you're doing is standing in a frontal and then picking up an ad. So it's very generic and you'd have to do more if you were doing a Mythic Plus dungeon. So overall, I think the fights are fine for the first two. And I am looking forward to see how they're tuned in live, but definitely prefer the first boss Olgrax over the second currently after beta testing. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know if you want to see more of this stuff. This is my first time trying something like this. Let me know if it's good or bad or if there's anything else you'd like me to go over in them. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you guys tomorrow when I do some more beta testing.